When I was seven years old, I flew in a plane for the first time and I created a game for myself. Count the number of backyard pools you see. You miss one, you lose. When I turned 21, I flew to Los Angeles, which was a first for me on two accounts. My first time in LA, and my first time losing the swimming pool game. For the least captive audience ever, you try and tell me what to do in case of a water landing. But what you don't understand is I put the frequent in flyer, collecting rewards which really only amount to flying more. Gazing out my rounded rectangle, I never miss the takeoff. The slow zoom as things bigger than you fade smaller and smaller until they become so distant that I can't even squish them between my fingers anymore. Imagine how a bird must feel the first time it swoops down to land on the ground and thinks, that house is much bigger than it looks. I like it better up there, where you're the first to know the weather. Suspended between time zones and atmospheres, I get acquainted with the clouds, cheating death and gravity for $329 plus tax. From up there, I see where roads begin and end. And I want to cheer on the cars. You're almost there. It's just around the corner. You just can't see it yet. From up there, I see small clusters of light reminding me of brainwave activity scans. And I think a city is perhaps a synapse of God's brain, lighting up where connections are being made with the Almighty, which makes sense why most of the earth below is so pitch black. With the seatbelt sign turned on and the man in the aisle seat white knuckled on the armrest, I remind him that no plane has ever crashed from turbulence. But if we had the choice, don't you think most passengers would give up before it passes? What if on the ground we had no choice but to strap in and wait it out? How many still fathered children would there be? How many unsigned divorce papers? How many unread suicide notes? How many of us would stick around if we knew that what is turbulent is ultimately harmless? And that, though annoying, the change fee is necessary because change never comes free and I'll gladly pay the price if it will get us where we're going faster. But we fail to recognize that if your name's on the suitcase, it's just gonna come around again and again until you grab it. The turnstile of life keeps kicking back what you refuse to pick up. In other words, we all have to claim our baggage before we can move on. From up there, I can see all that. But from down here, I'm lucky if I even take the time to look up and wish I could fly. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Real quick before you go, I wanted to let you know that today's sponsor is Unbound. Unbound is a platform that helps students like you save tons of money on their bachelor's degree. They'll show you how to earn a bunch of credits with less expensive online courses that they guarantee will transfer to your school of choice. Whether you're already in college or you want to be, each course you take could potentially save you thousands of dollars on your degree. My brother-in-law is actually currently an Unbound Unbound student, and he says that his favorite part of it is that everything is self-paced. You can go as fast or as slow as you want through the course, as long as you get your work done on time. It's kind of like a spoken word poem. I can speak as fast or as slow as I want, as long as I get to the end of the line. If you want to do college at your pace and on your terms, then make sure that you visit the link in the description, getunbound.org slash John, to get a free quote and save money on your degree. Chris, you should do Unbound. Chris is hoping to go to college and he's figuring out right now what the right avenue for him to go to college is or when the right time is. Unbound's perfect for you. He's signed up. You should be too. Again, thank you for watching. I will see you all soon. Keep being awesome.